Legacy Bowsworthy Bumblebee R.I.D. 01 toe line is an interesting figure because he really is just a straight repaint of a character that's completely unrelated. It's just whatever tow truck Hasbro had laying around. That being said, it is a fantastic repaint of that tow truck. He rolls extremely well. The wheels are actually separate from the rims, which is pretty interesting. Um, and he has some really nice accessories like a spare tire and a tow hook. I especially love the colors they picked on this guy. The bright green and blue with the hits of purple make this guy stand out among the other Junkions really well, while still somehow fitting in. I'm especially a fan of the orange that uh, accents a lot of the stuff and the bright silver that they used. It's just a fantastic paint job on this guy overall. It looks incredible. Kind of reminds me of the Mystery Machine, which a lot of people have pointed out, and rightly so, considering the blue and green are right on point for that car. Unfortunately, I have a little bit of a loose tire, but... It is what it is, and this guy still looks amazing and is a fantastic toy. I do have the box for this guy, uh, and there's actually some inconsistencies between this guy and the stuff on the box. So on the box, he has some paint up here, uh, he has some silver paint right there, and his wheel, where is it, there it is, is supposed to be purple. It is not. So a couple little paint inconsistencies on the back of the box, but... Hey, that's okay. It never killed anyone. So, toe line. Toe line is fantastic. It's orange is actually like a lot brighter. By the way, I am colorblind. So before we get too deep into the colors on this, I am colorblind. So if I call something the wrong color, I apologize. Um, the orange actually appears really, really well on camera. Uh, and I can actually tell the difference between it on camera, whereas I can't in person. Um, there's a few things, as I mentioned, this is a little wibbly, um, but overall the tolerances on this are better than the tolerances on my scrap hook in some places. Whereas scrap, oh, I guess scrap hooks wheels are kind of, are kind of wibbly too. Okay, never mind. Uh, but yeah, there's a couple things like specifically the elbows on my scrap hook are really bad. The ones on my toe line are really good. Um, so let's get transformed. Um, you can leave if you put the exhausts here, um, so you can put that here, the wheel, depending where you put it, can stay on, but I'm going to take it off, and I'm going to take off the hook as well. You can leave that on for transformation too. So to start off, we rotate these down, or pull them off, whichever you want to do. I like rotating them down, and then we just lift these doors up. You just kind of wiggle this free and lift these doors up. There we go. Just untab them from the bottom. Um, and then you just want to come right here, flip this up and come around back here. You're going to split the rear section like so and bring it out. And of course you might pull out the arms. You want to pull them out at a wide degree. You might pop them off the, off the peg here. You might slide them out, but it, he's a weaponizer. So that's bound to happen. Uh, then just straighten out the arms and the hands. So rotate those around. And once again, bring this out. And this is where the tolerances on my on tow line are better than scrap hook is because right here, it's just it's just way better. Um, and then you want to rotate this piece up. Ooh, can we get it up and around? And then fold this piece up until it meets right there. And there's these little tabs right there that are going to tab into these slots right there. So you want to just do that. Bring that in. Lock it in. Bring that in and lock it in. And then we can come to the back and we can rotate these around to form little wings. And then it's just a matter of clacking those into place. And there we go. And I like the exhaust port wings on uh, on tow line because I don't typically do the, that for my scrap hook. My scrap hook normally has the exhaust on the arms. So it just makes them look a little different. Spin 360 at the waist and then bring down the feet section, which is just a matter of getting it free. There we go. And then this is always tough and I find it easier because there's like three tabs right here and they're all pretty small. I find it easier to just kind of pop them off the legs and then kind of progressively, there we go. Well, I bumped my lamp, uh, progressively pull it apart and then pop them back on. Um, you might've just caught it there. I have a, I have a weak, I have a weak hip on him which is fine, it's fine, it happens. Um, and then from there, straighten out his legs, take the accessories and put them back on to toe line. And you could even have this 
up here. You can stick it on his back if you really wanted to, give him that back hook like he used to have. Uh, I'm just gonna put it on his arm. I like it on his arm. And there we go. There is Transformers Buzzworthy Bumblebee Tran Evolution, Legacy Evolution, Robots in Disguise 2000 Universe uh, toe line in his robot mode. Now robot mode on this guy is spectacular. I absolutely adore the blue that comes out here. The head sculpt is based on the Machine Wars and RID Flip Changer, which is a head sculpt that I already love. So seeing it new and bigger is even better. The posability on this guy is fantastic, I will say. It looks really nice in just about whatever pose, including just standing stock still. The colors really make this mold sing. And it's something that I had a big complaint about with Scrap Hook was just the colors. Here he is with some molds that were used in RID-01, such as Machine Wars Hoist and Scourge here, an original Scourge, but that's not it. We also can size him up with the only other legacy RID-01 character, that being Scourge himself. Uh, here he is with the other Junkions I also have available, Scrap Hook and uh, Crash Bar as well. Articulation on this guy is pretty good, honestly, all things considered. Um, so he has a swivel at the head, uh, just mushroom pegged on, uh, not his fault. Uh, he does have 360 at the shoulders, they're just pegged in, and then they go out about that far. Uh, they can tuck in a little bit. He has double jointed elbows, which is really, really nice. He can't really take full effect of them, but and he does have an elbow swivel and a wrist swivel, so that's really nice. Uh, going down, he has a waist rotation, and then his legs go forward about 90 back about 90 and out let's see about 90 so pretty good on there his knees go about 90 and then he has double forward and back at the ankle he has this crazy ankle and then a pretty good rocker on there so overall really really good articulation on this guy uh and unfortunately like you know i have kind of this loose one um it is kind of a mileage may vary because i don't know how well i know that the weaponizers out of all the you know gimmick figures that we get they sometimes have bad tolerances such as like my scrap hook has bad elbows so when i go to rotate his um, his arms inward, his elbow will pop off every now and then. But other than that, he's actually extremely, extremely tight. So uh, I don't know if this is just kind of a dud copy where he does feel like overall he feels a little looser than this mold, which is makes sense since this is the third use, since we have this one and then the purple one, which is a retool, and then now toe line. Um, it, so it does kind of make sense. But, um, but yeah. Just, just something to be wary about. He might be a little, little looser than you expect, but he is fairly good overall. Really, really nice articulation on this dude. All in all, Legacy Toe Line is a fantastic deep cut character from a show that a lot of people have nostalgia for, myself included. And it's a use of a mold that I think is a nice break from the Diaclone repaints we normally get. And it makes me excited because it means we might get other RID-01 character repaints or even just more fun repaints of other characters from different universes that aren't just Diaclone. It'd be a nice break from that typical use of, oh, just make it the Diaclone colors. He sets a precedent that I think the team should look at more and makes me really excited about the future of some of these molds where we see like clearly this could work as other things and toe line is an exact use of that anyways let me know what you thought about this guy in the comments below and i'll see you guys in the next one this has been bots obsession